far as I can gather, nobody's cooked buffalo steak over a buffalo chip fire in over a century. That is, until now. Welcome to Man vs. History. Hope you brought an appetite. What's going on everybody? Today we're going to be talking about buffalo chips, aka the stuff that comes out of the southern end of a northbound bison. We're covering this because for most folks on the Great Plains of the American West, from pioneers to Native Americans, buffalo chips serve as the fuel source for all their cooking and heating needs. Stories abound from the primary sources of the 1800s about the lack of wood and therefore the necessity of using dried bison excrement. In 1856, pioneer John Nielsen wrote in recollection about his journey across the Great Plains saying, quote, Our journey took us along the Platte River. There was plenty of grass and to the best of my recollections, little wood. Where we could not find wood, we burned buffalo chips. Another pioneer wrote, quote, Crossing the prairie, there was no fuel other than buffalo chips with which to cook our little meals of bread and meat. Frederick Percy, an Englishman who crossed the West in the 1800s, wrote in his book, Route from Liverpool to Great Salt Lake Valley, that there was very little wood, but, quote, plenty of buffalo chips. For those not accustomed to gathering the dried excrement of bison, it took some time to get acclimated to the process. Frederick Percy wrote that, quote, It is marvelous the wonders time and circumstances work. Young ladies who in the commitment of the journey would hardly look at a chip were now seen coming into the camp with as many as they could carry. Helen Carpenter wrote in her journal in 1856 that, quote, various chip gatherers may be seen, bag in hand, intent on getting enough to cook the evening meal. It would be amusing if it were not dire necessity which drives them to it. Everett Dick wrote in his book, Conquering the Great American Desert, that, quote, in spite of the fact that cow chips were absolutely clean and not messy to handle, not infrequently a fastidious housewife from the east turned up her nose at this effect of fuel. It wasn't long before she overcame her squeamishness. However, for in this case, familiarity did not breed contempt, rather respect and appreciation. John Nielsen even wrote about the competition that ensued for them, saying, quote, as soon as the wagons began to make the circle for camp, the race was on. Many times, just as I stooped to pick up a nice big chip, I was pushed over and would have to go farther on. Now, all this said, it's important to remember the advantages that buffalo chip fires have over wood ones. As a fuel, the buffalo chips offer the advantage of not throwing sparks in a bedding or clothing, which certainly was appreciated around and in tents and teepees. The sheer abundance of it on the Great Plains motivated one pioneer to remark that out west, the quote, cows cut the wood and left it scattered about, ready to be used. Most interestingly, many folks wrote about their preference for buffalo chips due to the flavor they imparted into the meat cooked over them. One settler wrote his family back east saying, quote, don't feel sorry for us cooking with cow chips, they have their advantages. We don't need to use pepper. This sentiment is echoed by Frederick Piercy, who wrote that, quote, a steak cooked on these chips required no pepper. Helen Carpenter even wrote in her journal that a Mr. Hale, quote, made a gather this evening, and reportedly he got, quote, some good fresh ones. Hmm. The flavor was so desired that upon reaching the Rocky Mountains, one pioneer wrote how they continued to use buffalo chips even after they procured sufficient wood. And it's here that I became most intrigued. Is this actually true? Do buffalo chips really impart a desirable flavor on the buffalo steaks cooked over them? And most importantly, what is this flavor? To get these answers, I went to work. After contacting the Big E Buffalo Game Ranch in my hometown of Evergreen, Colorado, I received permission to visit and collect as many buffalo chips as I desired. While the cowboys working the ranch had a heck of a good time watching me dislodge 100 pounds of buffalo crap from the frozen ground, I can't say enough how awesome of an experience it was to see the operation of the ranch firsthand and view these magnificent animals up close and personal. Returning home, I laid out the chips to help facilitate the drying operation. All right, folks, so uh, I made a bit of a mistake as I was processing these uh, <laughs> buffalo <laughs> droppings. Uh, so as you guys saw, so this is what these things look like, right? And uh, basically, I, I, I made a bit of a mistake. When I was shoveling them out of the ground, some of them were uh, rock hard and uh, some of them were pretty fresh. So I left the fresh ones and I just obviously brought the hard ones, thinking that the hard ones were old. Uh, so I tried laying them out here outside on this little deck I have to dry them out, but uh, it was so cold up here in the mountains that they never, you know, they just kind of stayed frozen. So I thought, all right, well, I gotta, what I gotta do is I gotta thaw them out. That's what I gotta do. So I put them back in the Rubbermaid container and I put them in my attic. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but apparently if you uh, thaw out uh, 100 pounds of buffalo crap in your attic, uh, it 
thaws and it becomes soft again and it just kind of melts down into a mush. So long story short, uh, it stunk things up pretty bad. So I have now taken that out of my house, thank God, before my wife ever noticed. She doesn't watch the videos, so it doesn't matter. Uh, and uh, basically brought them back outside. So now I'm drying them out out here. We're gonna have a couple sunny days in a row and I've got a fan going on them and a heater that I kind of rotate. So I've got this whole drying system set up. Uh, but now I'm taking this stuff right here, which is, what, well, was slop. And uh, I'm going to form it into thin uh, buffalo chips to enhance the drying. Oh God. Uh. <laughs> it's, it's, so bad. it's so bad. Form some patties. Oh no, I got the poo on me. On oh, my water bottle. No. Hmm? All right, so we got a fire going here. My cousin Dave. And we realized then that you can't really start a fire very well with just buffalo chips. So we're starting fire with wood uh, because the buffalo chips aren't necessarily dry enough to really get going. But we're still gonna cook over the buffalo chips and that should work. Theoretically. Theoretically. So this is what we're working with here. It's about one foot, maybe two, three inches thick. This is your this is your patty. Standard buffalo patty. That's what it is. It doesn't burn with a flame, but it burns with sort of a smolder, like coals, okay? Like peat. Apparently it imparts a positive, potent flavor onto the meat. It smells like the West. It does smell. No, it like actually a, smells pretty good. It smells like a cigar, doesn't it? Does. That's how I described it. So oh, I, that's nice. Yeah. So I know you can't smell it, but it really does. It really does smell like a cigar. You can see how it could taste good. Not, yeah. not the poop, but you can see how the meat cooked over it might. Now you know what your own poop would smell like if you only ate grass. <laughs> I assume this is what a vegetarian's <laughs> shit smells like. So, so when someone says you think your shit don't stink, what? no, it just smells like a cigar. <laughs> Great cologne, vegan. <laughs> See Warren again. Yep. We're talking about how when when women would come across the plains, like on the Oregon Trail or just coming out west. How when they first pick up a buffalo chip, they pick it up like this, with just two fingers, all dainty-like, and they describe it as they pick it up like it was poisonous, and then like that's how they would load it. And uh, this is cowboy talking about how he ran into this lady who uh, was new to the plains, and she was walking around and she, you know, picking up buffalo chips like this. And then he said he came back a year later, and she had them in her apron. She had one under her chin, and she's just picking them up, carrying, <laughs> carrying them like that. You just kind of lose that, uh, whatever that is, that daintiness. It goes pretty quick. I'll grab the uh, skewers. All right, we got in here, we're gonna try it out now. So this is buffalo steak cooked over buffalo poo. It tastes really good. Oh, whoa, whoa. I don't think I would need 
salt or pepper on this. You don't. So mm -hmm. even though it's cooked over a partial wood fire, mm -hmm. I definitely think that it imparted, I mean, I know it imparted yeah. a very different flavor onto it. You can even smell it on your clothes that this does not smell like a campfire. Yeah. This smells like I've been in a cigar bar or something. Yeah, that's exactly what it smells like. Like a good cigar bar, like a good, like, yeah, like toasted tobacco or something mm -hmm. on the meat itself. I can definitely understand, you know, when you read some of this, these old accounts, why people would talk about how they preferred cooking mm -hmm. over it. And I could see kind of what we did, doing that on purpose, where if you had to build it, you start a wood fire, and you knew you were going to cook meat over it, right. to throw some buffalo chips on it, and then cook the meat over that. If I was in a restaurant, and they offered buffalo cooked over buffalo, I'd order it. I would too. I'd order it. It smells good. It tastes good. It tastes amazing. Considering, considering there's no spice, there's no salt. None. There's no pepper. Like I think there's a lot of flavor in this, and it's not the cut of meat. There's nothing. There's nothing special. No. Nope. It. It's just. Oh, just a hunk of buffalo. Yeah. Sounds like cooked over buffalo. Boom. I'm impressed. I'm impressed as well. There's something to it. I will say, if we were cooking out at your place and and you said, "I've got some buffalo chips," I'd tell you to throw them on the fire. <laughs> I would too. <laughs> I would too. <laughs> That's interesting. I never would have guessed it. Mm. And the aftertaste is good. Mm -hmm. To me, it tastes. The aftertaste is when you, I, I think you get a lot more of that smoky flavor to it, that cigar flavor. No. Yeah. If you don't like cigars, I don't think you'd like it no. that much. No, I, I, I don't think you would enjoy it any, as much as just a regular steak. Uh, but it does have a, uh, that just, I mean, there's a lot of smoke in that thing. Yeah. But it doesn't taste like wood smoke. No, That's the difference. not at all. Yeah. It's that it's different, completely different flavor. Well, there you have it. <laughs> buffalo steak cooked over buffalo poo. It's good. I'd order it. I approve. I, I would order that as well. We approve. It tastes like the Wild West. It does. It's like putting a chunk of the 1800s in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs>